So I, I think you will have to listen to my terrible accent for a few more minutes. I'm sorry about it. <clears throat> so uh, after presenting what's new in the Orpheo Toolbox, I will present uh, some projects that use the Orpheo Toolbox uh, in their processing chains. And first I want to talk about one of, the, one of the capabilities of the toolbox that we call remote module. The remote module is a, an easy way to build your own application outside of the Orpheo Toolbox, but that relies on the Orpheo Toolbox capabilities. So for example, you want to build your, um, your application, but uh, you also want that uh, it, uh, to use some filters from the OTB in your application, and you want uh, to use the, the streaming capability of the Orpheo Toolbox, this is possible. You, you have um, the possibility to git clone the, the template from our uh, GitLab, and you will uh, have uh, everything set up for you. You can add your um, new applications in the app directory, if you write your own filters, you can add them to the source and include directories. And also, you can uh, add some tests in, your, uh, te in the test directory because you should be testing your code. Uh, this is your code, and uh, you can share it if you want, but, or you can keep it for your own usage. You can choose a license for your code. You can... Um, uh, put it on GitHub or uh, on the Orpheo Toolbox GitLab. You can benefit from the continuous integration platform that I uh, presented earlier. It's up to you. <clears throat> and uh, once you have uh, built your own uh, remote module, you can compile it. You, you will be asked for the directory where you install the Orpheo Toolbox. And uh, w once it's compiled, you can use your uh, application as if they were official or Photobox applications. So they, they can be um, uh, chained together, and uh, you will have the in-memory pipeline, you will have the multi-threading and the streaming capabilities uh, that are inherited from the Orpheo Toolbox. Also, uh, the Python IP API will be generated and you will be able to call your application uh, from a Python script, which means you can build a whole uh, processing chain by uh, calling your application uh, from a Python script. So this is what uh, some of the projects I will uh, present now are doing. And the first one that I want to present is uh, Maya. Maya is um, uh, a software for uh, atmospheric correction. So it will take a time series of image uh, of uh, level one products. It can work with uh, the Sentinel-2, Landsat-8, and Venus sensors. And it will generate uh, level uh, two uh, products uh, of that time series. It will uh, detect the clouds and the shadows of the cloud. It will also um, estimate the water vapor and the quantity of uh, aerosol in the atmosphere. And it will proceed to the atmospherical correction. It, it is also uh, able to remove uh, the thin uh, serious clouds in the images. It's already in use on the production uh, in, via the TEIA platform. But it's still an ongoing uh, research, so people at the CESBIO, the laboratories that are developing this tool, are still improving it and uh, setting some parameters. And since the version 4, it's a free and open source software that you can find on the GitLab of the Orpheo Toolbox. How does it work? Um, well, as I said, it works with time series. If you just have one image, uh, don't use Maya. But if you have images over six months or one year, and you want to uh, correct the effect of the atmosphere on the time series, uh, you can use Maya, and it will start with the first eight images and uh, generate a composite image, 
uh, and it will use that composite image to generate a level two image at date one. Once the level two image at date one is uh, generated, it will, it will be used uh, with the level one image at date two to generate the level two image at date two. And then it will be used with the level one image at date three to generate the level two image at date three, and so on. You have an example here with, uh, on the left, the level one image. You can see that it's white, bluish, that's the effect of the atmosphere. And also you can see that on the north, uh, there are some clouds. And on, uh, on the right, you will find the level two image generated by uh, Maya. The cloud has been masked and the atmosphere has been corrected. So now the pixel shows uh, the uh, top of canopy reflectances. <coughs> well, once you have your level two images uh, with a black wall in it because of the clouds, you may want to generate an image without cloud. And this is possible using WASP. WASP for Weighted Average Synthesis uh, Processor is a tool that will take a time series of image of level two images, so basically the output of Maya, and it will generate one uh, synthetic image uh, uh, that is cloudless. The idea is to compute for each pixel in the input time series, to compute uh, weights uh, according to the presence or closeness to clouds or uh, shadows of clouds, but also the quantity of aerosol in the atmosphere and the time, uh, the, the temporal distance between uh, the image and the synthesis you want to generate. It takes all of this into account to, uh, to compute weights and then it does a, a weighted aver uh, average uh, for the output pixel. Um, so th this algorithm is already in use uh, on production uh, via the Teia platform, and it's also a free software. You can find it uh, on the GitLab of the Orpheo Toolbox. Here are some examples of results over Germany, Norway, France, and Spain. So those are not direct uh, satellite images, they are uh, synthesis. They are the compilation of a time series of images, and the clouds have been removed. Um, on the image of, of our friends in Spain, you can see uh, it's a lot of green and some yellow. If you go to the Teia platform and see at the image generated for last month, uh, you will see that uh, the green kind of disappeared and the yellow to take a lot more space now, which is kind of scary. Uh, the next um, tool that I want to pr uh, present is Yota2. It's a framework to generate large-scale uh, large uh, land cover maps using uh, machine learning algorithms. So the idea is if you want to generate land cover maps and uh, you are working at uh, the scale of a country, for example, you will have a lot of data uh, to provide as input and uh, Yota2 is able to take time series uh, from uh, both optical and SAR uh, sensors. And uh, it will be able to work at large scale, which means uh, work with uh, different geological uh, areas. For example, here in France, if you live close to the ocean, you don't have the same climate than if you live in the Alps. So that needs to be taken into uh, account uh, in the process of generating the land cover map. And you can provide shape files uh, describing the different uh, uh, ecological areas. Uh, it's, uh, it's built upon Orpheo toolbox, so it can be multi-threaded. And also, uh, if you want to distribute your computation on multiple uh, computation nodes, it's possible through Dask. It's already used uh, in production. Through to, uh, to generate the OZO product, which is a land cover map over France produced every year. It contains uh, 23 classes, 
and it's generated uh, using uh, the, uh, the supercomputer at uh, CNES. It can work with different learning algorithms uh, since it relies on OTB. All the algorithms available in OTB are also available in uh, Yota 2. So that uh, includes uh, uh, Random Forest, SVM, and others. But uh, uh, it, was, it is also able to work with other uh, providers of algorithms, like uh, PTorch, if you want to do some deep learning. It's a free and open source software, and you can find the code on uh, Framagit. Framagit is a GitLab uh, is a GitLab owned by a French charities. So as you can see, your remote module don't have to be inside the uh, GitLab of Orpheo Toolbox. You can do whatever you want with your code. The next tool is uh, Let It Snow or uh, LIS. It's a processing chain that will uh, generate uh, uh, snow cover maps. So it will take a time series of uh, level two images. So basically, the output of uh, Maya. And uh, it will first uh, generate level two B pro products. So it's presence or not of snow uh, on the pixel. And then it will generate a synthesis a level three uh, product containing the date of the first appearance of snow, the date of the uh, disappearance of the snow, and a, a third layer with the duration of the snow cover during the year. So the example you have here is uh, the duration of the snow cover. Each pixel uh, has, a uh, has a value between zero and 365. It's the number of day of snow at uh, the position of the pixel. So the lighter is uh, the, uh, the, longer, the, the longest time. And uh, it's useful to uh, monitor snow covers on uh, big areas like uh, Alps or uh, Pyrenees in France and Spain. And uh, it's already used in production via the Teia platform also. And it's a, it's a free and open source software that you can find on the Orpheo Toolbox uh, GitLab. For people working with uh, SAR products, I will now present two remote modules uh, dedicated to SAR uh, products. The first one is DiapoTB, which is an implementation of the Diapason algorithm using Orpheo Toolbox. Diapason was uh, designed by uh, the CNES and it's aimed at highlighting changes in, uh, in uh, SAR uh, images. So if you have two uh, SAR images at different dates, uh, you will be able to do some uh, change detection and assess, the, for example, the effect of uh, earthquake or flood on the images. It's also a free and open source software that you can find off on uh, the GitLab of the Orpho Toolbox. The second uh, remote module dedicated to uh, SAR products is S1 Tiling. It's uh, a module to work with both uh, S, the Sentinel-1 and Sentinel-2 products. Well, if you want to work with both of them, you may want to have overlapping images. And you may, you may know that the Sentinel-2 images are um, cut into uh, tiles, and the tiles have names on a grid. So it's very useful when you want to talk about a specific uh, location. And the Sentinel-1 product do, doesn't, doesn't do that. So if you want to work on a specific tile with Sentinel-1 products, you can use S1 tiling to generate the, to the images and um, to auto-rectify them into the correct uh, tile. So for example here, uh, we have uh, two Sentinel-1 images. Uh, that one goes on the north and that one on the south, as you can see here. And if you want to work in this Sentinel-2 tile, uh, you just give the input images and the tile you want to work on to the algorithm, and it will generate for you the Sentinel-1 image 
but uh, just the part that you need into the good tile. The input data are taken from the EODAG platform, which is a platform that pr it's a provider for downloading uh, Earth observation data. It's uh, built upon RFO toolbox, so you can do some pipelines and multiprocessing. It's also able to work with Dask if you want to uh, uh, parallelize your process on different uh, computation nodes. And it's available in Conda and uh, PyP. It's also used in production through the projects uh, Tropix Co and uh, World Serial. And it's also a free and open source software that you will find on the Orpheo Toolbox um, uh, GitLab. Uh, since I still have some time, I will talk about something a little different, but still related, related to the Orpheo Toolbox. On, uh, on Tuesday, we had a training session, and uh, we were able to do some exercises together. And for the session, uh, I used a platform called EOCare, which is uh, specialized to uh, organize a training session for uh, GIS and Earth observation. The idea is to propose to all the students the uh, virtual machine that is customized to your training. You can uh, choose what software are installed inside the virtual machine, and everything is prepared, so during the training session, everybody works with the same environment and you won't have surprise. The, um, the, the, the virtual machine already comes with the Orpho toolbox installed on, in it, but also other tools like um, Snap or uh, QGIS, and also Python with Jupyter. So all the tools we can want to use during a training session for Earth observation are here. You can also decide what quantity of resources you want to use. And uh, if you need help during the training session, there is an help desk that can uh, listen to your questions and uh, uh, solve problems uh, directly during the training session. So if you want more information, I have some flyers here, and uh, you are free to come, to come and take them. And uh, thank you for your attention.